Hey, what's up, Shadow Priest? Today we're gonna to be offering some positioning tips in Arena. This is such a difficult video to make because it's so situational and there's so many different scenarios where you need to be playing a lot differently. It all depends on the map you're on, the comp you're playing, the comp you're playing against. There's a really a lot that goes into this. So we're gonna to try to prepare you for some of the uh, templates that you should maybe try to follow. If you're playing uh, against double melee, we've already kind of made a video on that. I'll put a link to the description. You always want to kite the melee away from their healer, which makes the healer have to pop out and be more vulnerable to CC. But in other situations, there's um, a little more nuance to it. You can't always uh, just kite a team like this. We're playing melee caster healer against melee caster healer, so it's very unlikely that I'm going to be able to kite an Ellie Shaman, for example. You know, he's going to hit me from 40 yards away, so we want to play a little differently in this matchup. Because I have the warrior on me the whole game. It doesn't really matter if I drag him too far. We're not really trying to kill him. What we're going to want to do instead is play a little aggressive in this matchup. I'm going to be playing, hopefully, the goal is to play in between my healer and their healer. So if my healer is right here and their healer is right here, anytime the healer wants to come CC, he's got to cross me and he's got to deal with my, my stun, my silence, and my master spell. So it's fine for me to play pushed in. I always want to be in range to CC the healer if possible. That way, whenever our damage connects, I can easily get something going. We do push in here. We've got tons of pressure. I probably don't need to be too close to everybody right now. Like, there's no, like, I could have hit the pally by standing over here, you know? Like, I could have been in this area of the map and still hit the pally, but I don't know what my thought process was going in there to, like, auto attack him. We force the bubble. And this is a good time to peel out. We don't really want to be stacked up on their pillar too much. I'd rather kind of be towards the pillar so I can get there if I need to, if I'm about to take a lot of damage. Really easy to avoid caster damage. He'll be slowed. He won't be able to get to me. For the most part, right now, we've got tons of pressure and my CC is almost back up. I'm really aware that he wants to CC my healer as well. So anytime that my healer gets popped into CC, Instantly, you need to have this part of your brain get activated where you need to protect your healer and stop any follow-up CC. Whether I uh, I can't really life grip him now because he's feared and feared roots people, but sometimes like if he's about to get repentance or sheep, I can grip him out of LOS so it doesn't go off. But right now, I see the pally running out to Hodge, and since I'm positioned in the middle of the map and I'm right next to my healer, remember, we gotta babysit our healer sometimes, at the end of this fear, on my healer, if you look at my raid frames, I'm gonna press silence so that he cannot get chain CC'd. And this is really huge because it'll disrupt their CC. Even if they get one off after the silence, I'm gonna to get topped off and they're gonna to have to go through my health bar a little bit more every time. So we silence him at the end. Pally gets the repentance because of that, otherwise he would have been hodged. So just using the knowledge that they wanna CC your healer and you being close enough to protect him is super important. Uh, we could fast forward a little bit. One thing I, I will point out is what the Shaman is doing is also really good. So we can also take notes of our enemies. He's playing right on the pillar. I'm in void form, so he's just going to LOS. So pretend this guy has Stormkeeper up, and he has five seconds left of the duration. He can shoot two lightning bolts. I'm just going to want to hide until it's over. I don't really do that in this example, but it's something that you can definitely be cautious of. LOS when they have enemy cooldowns up, whether that's Dark Soul, you know, Combustion, or Stormkeeper, or something like that. You can always play at the pillar which is kind of where I am right now. If I'm ever in danger, I can immediately duck away. Now, the same scenario is gonna happen where my healer is about to get CC'd. I can try to pre-MD him. We get the Hodge first, and this is gonna allow us to get tons of CC on the healer. He's trapped in the middle of the map. My healer is doing a really good job ranging and avoiding CC. So we're able to kind of just pump this guy through um, <clears throat> all of our chain CC on the healer and we're getting a lot of this because our healer isn't getting CC'd and when he does get CC'd look I'm close enough to the point where I can just completely MD him the warrior is not near me to kick and the shaman's still in the open to get hit by us so we're kind of just trucking them on damage I'm playing really offensive right now use my silence on the divine favor heal purge it kill the grinding totem we can really afford to push in right now. There's no way we need to be afraid. I've got Fade, I've got Disperse. We need to go all in for some CC on this guy and hopefully just end the game. So if we fast forward a little bit, I think we end up just winning here. Da, 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 da. Yep, we win. So this is just a cool little example of melee caster healer matchups where you don't have to constantly kite away. You can kind of be pushed up. You want to protect your healer as much as possible, but you also want to look for those good windows to land your CC when your damage is up. 
All right, so what happens when we're not the kill target? Where should we play, and what can we do to make it hard for the enemy team to win? Now, against this team, we fought them 10 times. They've always went on the Paladin. They use like basically every kidney, and I know I gotta do whatever I can to avoid CC so that I'm able to help my Pally during their setups. Now, I need to be aware of a couple things here. I need to be aware of the mage sheeping me. I need to be aware of the priest pushing into fear me, and I need to be aware of how I can help my pally with life grip because life grip is a really huge cooldown if I grip him out of the meteor if I grip him away from the rogue when the rogue doesn't have shadow step for example right now shadow steps on cooldown I'm instantly going to want to reposition myself so that I can grip my pally and I'm also going to communicate ahead of time that I have life grip and I can grip you on the next uh stun so what I'm going to do is drag myself over here preemptively I'm communicating to this Communicating, communicating this to my healer, I know in my mind I have to grip the next stun, and in order to do that I also have to not be CC'd. So I'm far enough away here that I can't get sheeped, I can't get feared, as soon as I see that kidney I'm going to grip and boom. He's completely out of LOS of the mage, as you see, the mage was fireballing him right there, now he cannot hit him right here. If he had combust or vendetta or something this would have been a lot sicker, but you kind of get the idea that you need to be the healer sometimes in the situation when they're going on your healer. It's really good against Cleaves to do this too, because they tend to go healers a lot, and if you can get distance and grip them on one of their setups and they don't have mobility, or your warrior you know, spears them or something and they can't get back, it's really, really important, and you can often save your healer's trinket or their bubble by doing a good life grip. And we'll, I guess we'll just finish off this video because we're about to win. Since we've just denied their setup, it's really okay for me to push in here. They don't have uh, too much CC for me. They do have fear, so I fade to avoid the fear but it ends up not mattering and we're able to kind of just crank them out there. So I hope that is a good example of you know what you can do when you're not getting trained to address your positioning. You want to avoid CC, pretend you're the healer, play at the pillar, and you know support your team with Master Spell and Life Grip. All right, we'll really quickly show an example of what bad positioning looks like. And sometimes this isn't on one particular person, it's kind of a team effort. So we're facing another RMP and we know that the Pally is their only kill target. It's really troll what we do here. I get uh, cheap shotted, so I'm kind of too close to everyone. It's really easy for them to run in and cross CC me. I think I'm either going to get pollied out of this or the priest can just sprint up and fear me out of this. My pally is way too close to them. Like, there's no reason for him to be right here. And he's actually going to walk around the pillar, even though I still have a life swap and I still have grip. The only thing I don't have is trinket, so I can't actually trinket to save him. Very important to save your trinket for a life swap, and that was a mistake I did not make after this game but we'll see i it's the same kind of scenario as last time i know they want to go on the healer i get feared I if i had trinket up it's easily a trinket swap here and then we live in this priest's oom and then we win the game but since we're positioned so far not even so far just just poorly positioned behind the pillar i can't life grip i can't swap i actually come out of cc with basically nothing to do because of the positioning so sometimes it's good in the middle of the game to kind of if you kind of see the positionings off and you know something's bad is going to happen try to call out for you or your healer to readjust that way they can't get a free setup and win i mean we get triple cc'd for basically no reason we just fucked up and if you know if he had been over here then all of a sudden the mage has to push out and try to connect on him and we make it difficult for them to get the CC, but just an example of what bad positioning looks like and how you can lose while you still have your cooldowns up. All right, let's take a look at a caster cleave. Now, caster cleave relies a lot more on positioning than melee cleave. I need to play similar against RMP to avoid CC as much as I can, but I'm also gonna need to play a little bit more offensive and stand on the healer because my lock will never be able to get CC on him, and the priest is really our only kill target, so the quicker I'm able to push in on him the better for the most part I'm just trying to help our team survive right now and then as soon as I feel like we're stabilized I'm going to go push in on the healer so we get a double fear on them they're taking a little bit of damage but I know that the healers are only kill targets so I'm trying really hard to get back there I'm positioned to the point where the priest can't cross CC me with mind control or fear so I'm able to easily mass dispel my druid there now as soon as I can ideally spooky man is going to want to get over to that priest we have a lot of mobility as Shadow Priest right now with Door Shadows, and if you're Goblin, you have a Goblin Jump. So I'm going to door over to the Priest to start to get some pressure. I see that he's got the UA up, but he's LOSing me, so the only thing I can really do right now is get my damage going. I'm full insanity. Priest always wants to cross CC me on their setups, right? He always wants to fear me. Usually it's off of a Cheap Shot or a you know, a polymorph or something, but because I'm not CC'd currently, all I have to do is fade and avoid the CC. Even if he doesn't fear into fade here, 
the fade is still good because he can't fear me for those four seconds and all of a sudden he's off the pillar i know that i can solo him so i fade his fear mind games him he's forced to dispel ua i stun him in the open while he's still silenced shadow crash dp and shadow or death and i can completely solo him there so really important that i am able to push in on the priest and solo him it's never a bad idea if you have ua lock on your team you can always play aggro on the healer there's also other situations where pushing in is okay if you have fade and disperse and you're facing a cleave team you don't always have to drag them back you can push in for the win so maybe we'll check out an example of that too right i guess we will show an example of double melee because we want to talk a little bit about what we can do offensively with our positioning sometimes defensively i love playing on this little edge right here so if the shaman's playing at this pillar and my pally's playing at this pillar all i have to do is jump down and my pally can heal me and the shaman can heal them so that's just basic positioning on this map really good to stand on those edges and abuse the line of sight for the melee i also want to stay really far away so i can get void form off as soon as possible we get it out before they're in range to kick and i'm able to start pumping some dam First CC goes out on the Shaman, we get Sank. I know that I can completely crank this guy, so I stun the Warrior, silence the Sham, and I actually fake it here because I thought the Warrior would Trinket kick me. He didn't, unfortunate. I Trinket to death him, um, unfortunately a little too late because he bubbles. So now that they've gotten my Trinket, I just use my Fade on the wings and run away. Divine Toll, I don't know if it went into Fade, but I didn't die there, so that's good. Now that I don't have really any CC, I'm just going to stay far away from the shaman so that if he wants to do anything uh, to heal, he's kind of kind of deal with my paladin over there. So they're like having a face off over there. He's able to get repentance out of the VT to spell because he had to dispel mind games. I tried to kill the banner, but I fucked up. Now that our only other source of CC here is fear, even though it's DR'd, I think it's worth it because this ret is below half HP. So I get the fear here and we try to force some more cooldowns. Shaman's uh, forced to trinket there. I was trying to pre-MC his trinket. He gets the link off. Doesn't really matter. I think now is a good time for me to adjust my positioning again. I don't really want to be too stacked up on top of everybody. Unfortunately, where my healer is, I can't really jump off on the edge right now. So I'm going to kind of scooch back, make the red have to push out again, do as much damage in between their little setup as I can. But look, now I've got stun and silence. So let's delete all that shit real quick. When I have stun and silence, and I have fade and disperse, and they have no cooldowns, pushing in here is completely okay, because I know that we don't need any extra CC to win. It could just be two instant CCs, and we'll get the job done. Now, because the ret was trying to LOS me, he LOSs his healer. This is an example of bad positioning. If the ret had just been in the open here instead of trying to run away from me, they probably would have survived here. He's not able to sank anything. I don't even know if it's up, but we just silence off the stun push in shadow or death a little too early there but we get the kill so completely acceptable to push in when you have fade and disperse don't worry about it the only thing i would be cautious of once that cc is over once your stun and your silence is over you need to get the fuck back out of there like you're going to take too much damage and los your healer if you stay back in there too long so as soon as your go is over retreat live to see another day and uh you know get that setup going again we'll talk a little bit more about the double caster comp so let's look at what's happening here i'm getting trained so i'm going to try to ideally keep these guys in the open it's really good to be in the wizard corner here so i could be a little bit further out and then whoever isn't getting trained is going to cut the shaman off and harass him so we've got my druid over here if the shaman wants to heal which he's literally not healing right now by the way he's just losing his teammates if he wants to heal he's got to come out and deal with like root beam and cyclone and just annoying boomkin things so Really important that I'm just standing here in the open. My Boomkin's able to hit him. He's able to CC the Shaman behind the pillar. So it doesn't even matter that this Red Trinkets is stunned because he can't get the freedom on the Shaman behind the pillar. I'm doing a really good job keeping them in the open. Fake cast, both are things. We'll just focus on positioning this game, actually. So now that we have forced basically every cooldown and they have all their cooldowns, I really need to run away. And running this direction doesn't really help me that much. I think I'm still going to take a lot of damage and I will LOS my healer. So instead, I'm going to go kind of towards my healer and behind him. I don't really want to bring them to him because he's going to have to deal with multiple interrupts. So I'm going to try to just tell him I'm running behind you and I'll GTFO this way. So now 
the shaman again is going to be forced to leave the pillar if he wants to heal any of his friends i'm just kiting the opposite way of the healer anytime they're on me and they're forced to actually get off of me because they know that they can't come out here and kill me when the shaman is you know 50 yards away so they die very easily even though they have a prop ally on their team that was just uh, i thought a really good example of positioning and allowing your other caster to do the work for you you know if you're getting trained don't try to run in and spam CC the healer because it's going to be super obvious when you're doing that and he'll be able to preemptively ground, fleshcraft, or, you know, get a cooldown off. So try to make it as difficult for the healer to heal as possible and let your teammate worry about the CC when you're getting trained. Here's another really good example of what you can do to make it easier for your teammates to get CC. We're on Blade's Edge, we're facing Turbo Cleave, which is really stressful, and especially on this map, if it can feel like there's kind of nowhere to go, we want to really abuse our positioning to make it easier for our healer to get repentances. And I think what typically happens in the game is, usually the game starts, and both the Holy Pally and the, the Shadow Priest will come up here, and the Turbo charges in, pops everything, the Pally can't heal because they're right next to him, and he gets cleaved, maybe has to bubble too. I don't know, that's a bad situation. Another situation is the Paladin stands right here, and I'll be in the middle, I'm the triangle, and then we'll make the enemy healer a rectangle. So what, what ends up happening is my healer is never gonna be able to get CC on their healer, and because I'm in the middle here, the healer is always gonna be able to heal them. So instead, what we wanna do is kind of reverse it. We'll put myself, the triangle, over here. We'll put my Paladin here, and the enemy healer is here. So now there's all of the space the healer has to go through to actually heal his teammates, and my pally is standing here spamming rip onto him. So we really wanna adjust this mid game if we notice what's happening. What I'm gonna do is, when I see the paladin crossing, I'm gonna goblin jump over here and run farther away from the healer. That way we're able to get more CC on him down the line. Unfortunately, he's on DR right now, but still the threat of the Repentance is super good. It forces the warrior off of me. He kicks my pally. I re-CC, and we might be able to get it again here once we kill the Grounding Totem. There's no interrupts, and I think my healer is just going to keep spamming rep. We want to readjust the positioning again. We've kind of swapped roles. I'm going to have my pally push in, and I'm going to push out. Instead of me going out there to do nothing, I don't have any CCs. I'm going to reverse the roles, let him do the work and try to do damage in between to make the healer have to heal. Continually pull them away. You see I'm trying to door shadows, but I realize they have both kicks, so it's not that good. I'm also gonna jump off here because now this guy really has to heal, right? Like I'm LOSing my pally a little bit, but it's okay, I fade and disperse if I get low. This guy has to really come out over here to this wall to heal, so I think we're really doing a nice job forcing this guy to come out, and now look what happens. Both of them are down low. They can't interrupt my paladin. He's up here. He's going to hodge this guy into a rep, and we're going to get tons of pressure because of it. Hopefully he gets a rep. He does get the rep, and boom. That's Pally's enemy Pally's trinket and bop. So we're, we're forcing a lot here. I think, ideally, I want to get back up top if I can. Now that um, the Pally can just free heal them where they're standing, it's really good for me to readjust my positioning. So I'm positioned on top of him to fear. Get a full fear here, force that uh, tremor totem. Now my warrior can fear next, and they won't have tremor for it. Getting pretty low here. We'll focus on positioning though. What else can we do in this situation? So now we're in the same same spot we were earlier, and we realized we were fucking up. The pally's here. I'm here. Their pally's here. So really easy for the pally to hear his d heal his DPS. They're right next to him. Spooky man needs to GTFO and try to adjust that positioning again. We need to trade our positioning out. Me trying to push in here is a little okay. I still have fade and disperse. I'm gonna silence the pally. We get his wall. Look what's happening again. My healer's pushing in. I'm gonna push out. So we've got duck eggs over there going hard, and I'm gonna continually run away from the healer. That way our pally can try to focus on getting some CC. Just fast forward this a little bit. Stun him into repentance. He bubbles, but because he has no sack, they've got no cooldowns to live, and we're able to just spam Repentance all game. I don't think my pally would ever get a Repentance if we were playing the same way where I was chasing the healer and he was 40 yards away. It would be impossible because he's got to cross the melee to deal with that now, and the way we were positioned there, I thought, gave us a good advantage for the Repentances. Let's jump into this last video. I know there's a ton of stuff we haven't covered, but I feel like this is one of the more important elements to emphasize. Right here against this team, I know I'm not the target. 
I need to do the best job possible stopping CC on my healer. So right here, I'm in LOS to sound some mage. I was debating whether I should do it, and I didn't do it, and I kind of fucked up. I'm in LOS of him to MD. I fake the kick, and then I just start healing, actually, instead of mass dispelling. I get kicked by the feral. I probably should have MD'd the sheep here, but I'm going to get the re instead. So we get the sheep. Even though I probably should have got the first one, it's okay. We're playing near our healer, we're babysitting him. But now I also need to avoid CC when possible. So if this mage ever looks to poly me, I've got a bunch of tools, right? I've got meld, I've got fade, and death. I've already used meld and fade, so my only option is to death. Now if I want, I can get dispelled out of the next sheep. Unfortunately, he dispels me when I death, so try to communicate to your healers when you're going to death those sheeps. I really need to be careful of this priest CC as well. He's going to be looking to either mind control me or fear me, just like RMP. They're always going to want to cross CC you, and if I'm deathing the mage's sheeps, they're going to need some other form of CC. So look, I'm getting mind controlled. We use the edge here to LOS it. Cannot get CC'd while the priest is not in line of sight of me, so just really important to be aware of that. Now I know that they're going for more CC. We see the priest leap in here with his vault legendary to get a fear. I know that that's a good time for me to grip my healer away. The priest is going to use fear. Look, he uses fear while the healer's over here. So my positioning allows me to help my healer out and uh, avoid CC on him. I'm kind of playing like the healer right now. I need to avoid polymorphs and do damage when I can. I death this polymorph again. My next way to get out of it is fade. Unfortunately, he knows me. I'm going to mass dispel this and push in because we've got all our CC up and they're at 1%. It's totally acceptable to push in here. Pretty good example, I think, of how I avoided CC. If I didn't get... If I did get CC'd on any of those setups where I MD'd or gripped, you know, they actually would have forced a cooldown and it would have been scary for our team. But because I'm playing kind of like I'm the healer and avoiding CC, we're able to keep our team aggressive and get the W. All right, guys, that's going to be it for this video. There's a lot we didn't cover, and there's a lot of stuff that's so situational and complex that it's hard to break down in one video. But I hope for the most part these examples gave you a good idea of how you can adjust your positioning in the game, how you can play defensively with your positioning, offensively, depending on you know who's getting attacked. One idea I had in the future is to look at some AWC VODs of the tournament and see how other Shadow Priests are positioning, what they're doing to help their team set up kills and survive longer in particular. But... As for now, I think we're going to end the video. Check out twitch.tv slash stopsp. We're going to be streaming every night. High-rated arena, above 3K, facing the best teams, trying to improve as players. Definitely hop in the stream. Thank you so much to the people who have been coming by and supporting. Really uh, motivates me to keep doing it, so appreciate that. Hope everyone enjoyed the video and look forward to more content in the future.